And welcome to our Section 7 Conditionals Memory Palace walkthrough. And as always, consider these section wrap-up videos to be 100% optional. So to recap our last episode, and we heard a selfless and inspiring story about an injured, fence-jumping dream sheep who was saved by an off-duty surgeon and a very noble tick. And then we watched as dog equality was pushed one step further as a local fire department adopted the very first non-Dalmatian. He became their official mascot after they saw his incredible willpower. This dog avoided eating a homework assignment that was right in front of him for three hours. And he earned an official fire dog identification card for his success. And finally, we ended with a hard-fought negotiation from the always logical Spock from Star Trek and a Merrill Lynch gangsta who had to pass a lie detector test just to earn Spock's business. And that's going to any length. Go Merrill Lynch. Get ready to continue our amazing adventures as we explore more of our Python memory palace now. <laughs> Hooked up to a lie detector. Man, that guy, it's a hard bargain. All right, well, why don't we go outside and get some fresh air? I think we've been cooped up enough. Uh, Mr. Hash Brown, have a great speech tomorrow. Of course, Grim Reaper, Devil, keep your fiddles away from me. No challenges here. And Ski Ball Duck House and their children. I hope you guys are happy. Why don't you follow me through this door? I want to show you something really cool. It's a corner of the backyard where three amazing stories have happened. So once upon a time, there was an air conditioner, and his name was Mr. Air Conditional. Now, 18 years ago, he was young, strong, rated five stars by Consumer Reports. In fact, he was so powerful, he was actually rated only to be an outdoor air conditioner. Now, his whole life, he had good intentions, worked hard, and he was really proud of the many people that he kept cool. But unfortunately, after 18 years, he started breaking down. And inside, Mr. Air Conditional feared that he was about to become garbage. Until one amazing day, Santa's elf was here in Las Vegas taking his retirement vacation, and he walked by the old air conditioner and remembered building him for a little boy in Vegas 18 years ago. So he decided to fix him up. The air conditional was so powerful afterwards that he could actually make snow. His fans would blow so hard that beautiful soft snow would fall everywhere and he was happy and felt young again. And this wasn't just any snow. It was so soft that from the movie Frozen, Anna and her sister Elsa traveled over 200 miles just to come and play in it, right here in this corner. Once upon a time, on these very grass seats was from the movie Frozen, Anna and Elsa, and their friend, Santa's elf, who was long retired. Now, Anna and Elsa loved sitting on this exact couch, listening to the elf tell stories of Santa. In fact, they really hoped to meet him one day. They all loved the snow. They all loved the cold. They knew they'd get along great. They imagined how fun it would be to play in all of that snow that's around Santa's workshop. Now, the problem is that nobody except the elves are allowed to actually see Santa's workshop. But then, the elf remembered that in the movie Frozen, Elsa had the ability to make ice bridges. So he called up Santa and said, Hey, I've got Elsa from Frozen. If I bring her up, maybe we could make a special exception and she could build those ice bridges all around the workshop to help us elves move boxes around. And Santa Claus agreed. Anna and Elsa jumped for joy. They were so happy. They all jumped in the air and they left Mr. Air Conditioner to blow and blow away. Ah, oh, but alas, little did they know about the damage that Mr. Air Conditioner was doing to the tree right above him. Once upon a time, this very tree had no leaves. Her name is Mrs. Decision Tree. And for many years, she was a sad, bitter tree with a cold heart consumed with jealousy and hate for everyone around her. Growing up, she was always teased by the other trees for having inferior branches. Trees, of course, are never able to move, but from where she's planted, she can see a beautiful rainbow elliptus nearby, and she often breaks into tears knowing that she could never be loved like that. 
No, of course not. Not as long as she only had ugly branches, she believed. See, the problem is that Mrs. Decision Tree believed that she could grow beautiful leaves. And she might even bloom if only someone would move Mr. Air Conditional from below her. She believed that his relentless cold air is the thing that kept her branches in an eternal winter state. But one day, she saw a loving mother bird teaching her children how to fly. And the love made her feel a bit warm inside. And right afterwards, to her surprise, she looked down and noticed a single leaf on a branch and wondered, could she have been wrong about her hate for Mr. Air Conditional? Maybe it wasn't his cold air that was stopping her from blooming, but maybe it was her cold heart and her hatred for him. So for the first time in several years, she turned to Mr. Air Conditional and sincerely congratulated him on his new parts. She'd never felt this good before. It felt great to just let go of that hate, and it warmed her inside in a way that she's never experienced before. And before she knew it, she was one of the most beautiful blooming trees in all of the backyard. Every tree around turned to look at her bloom for the first time. She was beyond happy. She lived happily ever after. Okay, and that's programming for you. Now over here we have a, a couple of frenemies. We've got a ladybug who sells vacuums door to door. And she's in a playful mood today. And she's playing a giant Jenga game against the Joker from Batman. And the Joker's in a pretty playful mood himself, as he always is. But it's always a little bit weird, because he's the Joker. You never really know what's up his sleeve. And now they're down to the very last Jenga, and it's the Joker's move. And oh, it topples over. Looks like Ladybug won again. It's actually pretty common. He's not that good at this game. The Joker puts his hand out to the Ladybug and says, I would just like to congratulate you on another win. But guess what? In the Joker's hand is one of those electric shock hand buzzers, and he's going to zap that little ladybug if she shakes his hand. But she's on to him. She's got her own plan. She opens her eyes wide and looks over his shoulder. It's Batman! And then when the Joker jumps for safety, she flies off that clever little ladybug, and she flies away to sell more vacuums, presumably. <laughs> And for our final story today, I want to take you to this spot. It is the site of the first alien encounter on the planet Earth. There was a warrior woman who was here playing um, this beanbag game. It's called uh, Cornhole. Anyways, playing Cornhole. And all of a sudden, an alien ship lands right over here. And this evil alien comes walking down the long ramp and everyone just stops and their jaws drop and he sticks this huge red flag in the ground and claims that Earth is now property of his alien race called the Hamanguas. Now, none of the humans, uh, any of us, feel like living the rest of our lives in some kind of human zoo or as slaves for these Hamanguas. So we need to come together and defend this world and take back our planet. But it's not that easy because a lot of people are really scared and they don't want to really fight and maybe die. They just want to get out of there. Like the guy she was playing cornhole with, he was so scared when the alien came, he just started running. And he actually ran the entire length of a marathon. And he only took just a few seconds when the alien first was landing to set his Fitbit to make sure that he went the entire distance of a marathon. He normally doesn't even run marathons, but he did this time because he's getting away from an alien. But anyways, the way it ended was with this woman pulling a sword out of her back, which she wears. That's her fashion style. And boy, did it ever pay off today because she raised her sword very slowly and squinted her eyes letting that alien know she meant trouble and then he was like ah, I don't want a piece of that and then he takes his red flag out of the ground and he goes I'm out and flies into the stars Finn Finn 
Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.